Shalom. Call Halayma Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shah. By Hashem Wakakadash. All praises be to the Most High. Yahweh. In the name of His Son. And the Lord and Savior. Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that is scattered abroad. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. <clears throat> Coming back at you with another lesson. Pulled out of the fire. <clears throat> Pulled out of the fire. There's a short video clip that I'm going to play, but I'm, before I do, I'm going to read this disclaimer. <clears throat> this is the copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. Allowance is made for fair use. For purposes such as criticism, comment, news, reporting, teaching, scholarship, education, and research. So this video is just for that. It was based on opinions and not professional facts or verified data. <clears throat> so educational purposes only. Let's continue. Klaus Schwab, God is dead, and the WEF is acquiring divine powers. God is dead, according to the World Economic Forum, who have also declared that Jesus is fake news and that WEF leaders have acquired divine powers to rule over humanity. Klaus Schwab's right-hand man, Yuval Noah Harari, has announced that the WEF has been so successful in its plans that it is acquiring divine powers of creation and destruction. And the blasphemy doesn't stop here because Yuval Harari has also promised that the WEF will also make humans into gods. Oh, when Bill Gates tells world leaders death panels will soon be required because normal people like us are no use for the elite. Klaus Schwab, God is dead, us are no... <clears throat> so the scriptures are spot on when it's talking about that man of sin being revealed in the last days. And that man is talking about the symbol of the entire nation. It's not just an individual, but it's talking about a nation, Edom. Because we know when we read Genesis 36 and 8, it's describing a nation. And it's describing a revised empire that is a conglomeration of all the empires rolled into one, which makes it Babel or Babylon confusion. <clears throat> so what we have is a revision of, of the Roman Empire that pulled from the ancient worships and pagan practices of all the ancient empires. The Romans just simply absorbed them underneath their umbrella. And they had vassal states underneath them. And then this empire would come back with these vassal states being the Ten Horns or the NATO countries, which started out under the European Economic Community. <clears throat> and... They received their charter around 1957, the um, European Union, and then they were, they were established in 1958. And I haven't read the details of that history in a while, but the original NATO countries were the, what we, the Bible is describing as the Ten Horns that are nested with the European Union. Now, we know that America is a part of NATO, but it's not a part of the European Union. And the United Kingdom, or Britain, they exited out of the European Union. 
but they're still a part of NATO. <clears throat> so, the daughter of Babylon is what's being described as the last remaining ruler. And it might sound confusing. Well, I thought it was the revised Roman Empire. Well, we got to remember that Rome absorbed all of the ancient empires underneath its pagan worships, its monetary system, its governmental system and structure. They pulled from the Greeks, and the Greeks pulled many of these Egyptian gods. Rome simply relabeled and repackaged the names of these gods and then gave them Latin or Roman names. So it is a mixture of confusion, organized chaos, if you will. But nevertheless, Esau, Edom is associated with Babylon. We remember when we go back to 586 B.C., the Edomites helped the ancient Babylonians take down Jerusalem. And under that assault and that siege, the southern kingdom wind up going into captivity, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. But I want to fast forward until today. So Esau, Edom, the progenitor of the wicked, which is the reincarnation of Cain, is describing the man of sin, but really that represents a nation of rulership and last age or kingdom, which is Esau, Edom's kingdom or the revised Roman Empire that are following the ancient Babylonian practices, worshiping Ishtar or Ashtoreth. And many of these holidays were pulled from the ancient Greeks and the Egyptians, the Babylonians. But I want to go into the scriptures real quick and talk about that man of sin being revealed in the last days. I'm not going to make this long. See the title here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord, Yehoshai, Hamashiach, and by our gathering unto him. We're being gathered back together now. So Paul had a very heavy spirit on him. Paul has a very heavy spirit on him. <clears throat> that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Hamashiach is at hand. So this epistle to the church of Thessalonica is addressed to the Israelites in Thessalonica. And Paul is speaking to the church back then, but it applies unto us today that are being gathered by this word, by this truth. Just like the Roman Empire was rebirthed and reestablish the children of Israel are on the scene and are being quickened or made alive by the preaching and teaching of the word. So that would mean that Paul or the key characters, the key leaders would be back in their lot. Let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a fallen away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So we're reading about a proud man that has a God complex that has said in his heart, he will be like the Most High. So they're attempting to reach Godhood and a deified status worthy of being worshipped through an artificial intellectual an artificial intellectual means or AI artificial intelligence. So he has to fabricate a birthright or obtaining promises through scientific means. And 
In other words, science goes back to gnosis or gnosis, which means to know. So they're trying to fabricate their way into the promises of the kingdom. <clears throat> so he's doing this through technology. So we're seeing this prophecy speak to us in real time. And that's why I showed the video up front. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. Wait a minute. They say God does not exist. And that whom the world ignorantly called Jesus, which his real name is Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, the deliverer, the anointed one. That, that is fake news. <clears throat> so we're seeing this prophecy play out in real time, which is a very, very exciting time to be on the earth right now. Because we're going to see some action. As the right hand clash with the left. And I'm talking about the sons of God. Or the princes of the power. Clashing with Esau Edom. So this is going to be that final battle that's going to take place. And the angels of the Lord is going to show up on the scene. <clears throat> and we can read about that in Revelation chapter 12. I want to stay on point. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So we read, we saw the video on the WEF, how they're trying to create a new human if you will, a new species to repatent and relabel a entire new creation because the Most High's creation is not sufficient or it's inadequate. We forget, we get injured, we make mistakes, we cannot live forever. So in their mind, in their thwarted way of thinking, they're going to try to correct what the Most High did not make perfect. Not realizing that this is just a temporary stepping stone that we're in right now. A transitory phase that the Israelites are just being tested and tried in order to obtain the prize or the reward of the kingdom. But the bottom line is they're not given any of the promises. Matter of fact, when we read the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, it says that Esau Edom, or Edom, which is the entire nation, is the scene of great future prophecies, or great future destruction, that Edom plays a major part in great future judgments or destruction that they figure prominently in Bible prophecy. So that means they're not done away with. There's several scriptures or chapters we can go to. Ezekiel chapter 35, Ezekiel chapter 36, where they would take the land or the holy land of the Lord. So they're not done away with. Edom figures prominently at the scene of great future judgments. So we're reading about the man of sin or the nation of the wicked that are in the crosshairs for Yahweh's judgment that we read about in Isaiah chapter 63. Second Thessalonians 2 and 5. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. So we are here. And why would Paul say remember if the people that he's addressing this 
epistle to or letter sent away would not be here to remember. So this is where the Bible can become a stumbling block if we don't if we don't understand that our spirits are regenerating every third and fourth generation. We can get stumped here. So he's not telling dead bodies to remember something. These people are back in new bodies receiving the message. The churches of the elect. Let's read it again. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 5, Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So we're in that judgment window that the chariots of the Lord are going to crack the outer firmament and enter into this realm. Okay, there's a reason that a UFO watchtower has been set up. A UFO task force. And last I checked, upwards of 30 to $50 billion have already been invested into these programs. But it's probably way more than that. I'm going to get ready to close this out, but I want to go here into the prayer of Azariah. <clears throat> okay, this goes into the three Hebrew boys that were cast into the furnace under Nebuchadnezzar. Ancient Babylon. I'm not going to read all of this, but we'll start here and we'll stop somewhere around verse 10. And they walk in the midst of the fire, praising God and blessing the Lord. Then Azariah stood up and prayed on this manner, and opening his mouth in the midst of the fire, said, Azariah means God help us. Blessed art thou, O Lord, God of our fathers. Thy name is worthy to be praised and glorified forevermore, showing you that there is no salvation or deliverance without knowing the name. How can we call on the name that we don't know? We just read it. So they were delivered out of the fiery furnace back then, Obtaining salvation, knowing the name. Blessed art thou, O Lord, God of our fathers. Thy name is worthy to be praised and glorified forevermore. For thou art righteous in all the things that thou hast done to us. Yea, true are all thy works. Thy ways are right and all thy judgments true. And all things that thou hast brought upon us and upon the holy city of our fathers, even Jerusalem, thou hast executed true judgment. For according to truth and judgment didst thou bring all these things upon us because of our sins. Did not Paul say there should be a falling away first? So the Israelites were made to go off, subject to vanity, to fulfill Bible prophecy, so that the Most High can demonstrate his mercy upon the vessels of mercy created to be delivered, Jacob, Israel, and execute and demonstrate his judgment and wrath upon the vessels of the wicked, or the vessels created for destruction, which is, which we can reference Romans chapter 9. So the Bible says in Romans chapter 9 that they are fitted to destruction, tailor-made to be judged, 
so that the Most High can show his power, judgment, and wrath on the vessels of destruction. For we have sinned and committed iniquity, departing from thee. See? <clears throat> and this is what Israel have done historically. A cycle of falling away, being delivered and restored, then getting built up in pride, falling away again, crying out for deliverance, crying out for mercy, being delivered, being lifted back up, built back up in pride, falling again. And the cycle repeats itself. <clears throat> For we have sinned and committed iniquity, departing from thee. And all things have we trespassed and not obeyed thy commandments, nor kept them, neither done as thou hast commanded us, that it might go well with us. And this is why we needed a mediator, Yahweh Shai, or intercessor. Because we're not going to be able to keep the law perfectly. Wherefore, all that thou hast brought upon us, and everything that thou hast done to us, thou hast done in true judgment. And thou didst deliver us into the hands of lawless enemies, most hateful forsakers of God, and to an unjust king in the midst of and the most wicked in all the world. So now we're under the wicked that pulled from similar worships, rituals, practices, sacrifices, blood oaths, debauchery. <laughs> so now we're under the daughter of that ancient system. Remember Rome pulled from all these ancient pagan worships and gods and practices, including the blood rituals and sacrifices. See, let's go here and we'll come back there. So King David prophesied about America, along with Isaiah and Jeremiah and Micah and Zechariah. As you can see here, so we'll read in Micah 4 and 10, Micah 4 and 10, be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. There shalt thou be delivered. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. See? So this place is going to be the new fire or the scene of great future judgment, Edom, that the Compact Bible Dictionary tells us. Edom figures prominently at the scene of great future judgment. And I'm paraphrasing. See, let's get, let's show something with the fire <clears throat> right here. Jeremiah 51 and 33. The book of Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 33. Let's go up right here. See, call him like Yahweh by Shimmy Yahweh Shabbat Shalom Jeremiah 51 and 33. Jeremiah 51 and 33. Verse 31, one post shall run to meet another and one messenger to meet another to show the king of Babylon that his city is taken at one end. So they're going to fall by the furnace of the Lord's fury, fire. Verse 32, and the passages are stopped and the needs they have burned Verse 32, and the passages are stopped, and the reeds they have burned with fire, and the men of war are affrighted. So this is the future furnace. 
that the elect, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or in modern times, the elect is going to be pulled out of the furnace of the fire from these nuclear missiles followed by the laser and chariot fire of the so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord. See, so we can see a connection or a correlation to ancient Babylon under Nebuchadnezzar. Psalms 137 verse 8, O daughter of Babylon, who are to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. Remember, some of the Chaldeans were burned by the fire under Nebuchadnezzar when they made the furnace so hot that it even burned them. So they're going to become victims of the work of their own hands. <clears throat> but on a massive scale, a grand scale or a large level, the entire United States is going to be under judgment by fire. The daughter of Babylon. Let's get ready to close out here. <clears throat> See, now we can go back here. Prayer of Azariah. Verse 8, and thou didst deliver us into the hands of lawless enemies, most hateful forsakers of God, and to an unjust king, and the most wicked in all the world. So now we're under the daughter of Babylon. And now we cannot open our mouths. We are become a shame and reproach to thy servants and to them that worship thee. Yet deliver us not up wholly for thy name's sake, neither disannul thou thy covenant, <clears throat> and cause not thy mercy to depart from us for thy beloved Abraham's sake, for thy servant Isaac's sake, and for thy holy Israel's sake. The Lord is not going to forget his promises that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the elect is going to become the vessels of mercy so that the Most High can demonstrate that mercy and eternal love that he has for his inheritance, which connects to Psalms 136. <clears throat> To whom thou hast spoken and promised that thou wouldest multiply their seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand that lieth upon the seashore. For we, O Lord, are become less than any nation and be kept under this day in all the world because of our sins. So we're scattered throughout the entire earth. We look like every nation under heaven, pursuant to Acts chapter 2. As it is this day, <clears throat> for we, O Lord, are become less than any nation and be kept under this day in all the world because of our sins. So right now, the daughter of Babylon has global reach. So this is the revised Roman Empire and a derivative of Babylon. So it came out of the ancient kingdoms. But now it has global military, economic, political, and religious power, building a technocracy under artificial intelligence. And this is why the digital sea hit plays a pivotal role in these last days on end of times prophecies. Neither is there at this time prince or prophet or leader or burnt offering or sacrifice or oblation or incense or place to sacrifice before thee and to find mercy. No temple. Nevertheless, in a contrite heart and a humble spirit let us be accepted. So right now, our bodies are a living sacrifice. 
See, right here, verse 14. Like as, like as, or compared to burnt rams and goats. Like as in the burnt offering of rams and bullocks. And like as in ten thousands of fat lambs. So let our sacrifice be in thy sight this day. And grant that we may wholly go after thee. For they shall not be confounded that put their trust in thee. And now we follow thee with all our heart and fear thee and seek thy face. Put us not to shame, but deal with us after the loving kindness and according to the multitude of thy mercies. The vessels of mercy that are going to obtain the promises spoken of in Romans chapter 9. And the vessels of wrath or the daughter of Babylon is going to feel the judgments of the Most High. And the Most High is going to make himself known and his name feared and revered throughout all the earth. So his vessels of mercy, the elect of Israel, is going to obtain fame along with the Most High's name and power. So we're in those times. Hey team. Where the uh, key characters are back on the scene. <clears throat> and I'll go ahead and copy and paste that video into the description box. So hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Bahashim Rekwakadash. Barakatam. See you on the next lesson. Lord willing, call me a Shuala and the Ba the Ba. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.